Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Sorry I took a few weeks, not a few weeks, but a few days uh, break. I just needed it. Uh, just totally forgot. So I asked for forgiveness. Uh, please forgive me for those who watch regularly. Um, so we'll be picking up in Genesis uh, chapter 42. And we'll read... Uh, Forty-two and forty-three. So Genesis forty-two and forty-three. All right, let's begin. When Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, Why do you keep looking at each other? Listen, he went on, I have heard there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us so that we will live and not die. So then jo so ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt. So Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brother, for he thought something might happen to him. The sons of Israel were among those who came to buy grain, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Joseph was in charge of the country. He sold grain to all its people. His brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the ground. When Joseph saw his brothers... He recognized them, but he treated them like strangers and spoke harshly to them. Where do you come from? He asked. From the land of Canaan to buy food, they replied. Although Joseph recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. Joseph remembered his dreams about them and said to them, You are spies. You have come to see the weakness of the land. No, my lord. Your servants have come to buy food, they said. We are all sons of one man. We are honest. Your servants are not spies. No, he said to them, you have come to see the weakness of the land. But they replied, we, your servants, were twelve brothers, sons of one man in the land of Canaan. The youngest is now with our father, and one is no longer living. Then Joseph said to them, I have spoken. You are spies. This is how... You will be tested. As surely as Pharaoh lives, you will not leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one from among you to get your brother. The rest of you will be in prison so that your words may can be tested to see if they are not true. If they are not, then as surely as Pharaoh lives, you are spies. So Joseph imprisoned them together for three days. On the third day, Joseph said to them, I fear God, do this and you will live. If you are honest, let one of you be confined to the guardhouse while the rest of you go and take grain to relieve the hunger of your households. Bring your brother's younger brother to me so that your words can be confirmed. Then you won't die, and they consented to this. Then they said to each other, well, Obviously we are being punished for what we did to our brother. We saw his deep distress when he pleaded with us, but he would not listen. That is why this trouble has come to us. But Reuben replied, Didn't I tell you not to harm the boy? But you wouldn't, I, but you wouldn't listen. Now we must account for his blood. They did not realize that Joseph understood them, since there was an interpreter between them. He turned away from them and wept. When he turned back and spoke to him, he took Simon from them and had him bound before their eyes. Joseph then gave orders to fill their containers with grain. Return each man silver to his sack and give them provisions for their journey. The order was carried out. They loaded the grain on their donkey and left there. At, that place, at the place where they lodged for the night, one of them opened their, his sack to get feed for his donkey, and he saw his silver there at the top of his bag. He said to his brothers, My silver has been returned. It's here in my bag. Their hearts sank. Trembling, they turned to one another and said, What is, it, what is this that God has done to us? When they reached their father Jacob in the land of Canaan, they told him all that had happened to them. Man who is the Lord of the country spoke harshly to us and accused of us spying on the country. But we told him we are honest and not spies. We are twelve brothers, son of the same father. One is one 
One is no longer living, and the youngest is now with our father in the land of Canaan. The man who is the lord of the country said to us, This is how I will know if you are honest. Leave one brother with me. Take food to relieve the hunger of your household and go. Bring back your younger brother to me. And I will know that you are not spies, but honest men. But I will then give your brother back to you, and you can trade in the country. As they began emptying their sacks, there in each man's sack was his bag of silver. When they and their father saw their bags of silver, they were afraid. Their father Jacob said to them, It's me that you make childless. Joseph is gone, Simeon is gone. Now you want to take Benjamin? Everything happens to me. Then Reuben said to his father, You can kill my two sons if I don't bring him back to you. Put him in my care, and I'll return him to you. But Jacob answered, My son will not go down with you, for his brother is dead and he is alone is left. If anything happens to him on your journey, you will bring your my gray hair down to Shiloh in sorrows. Now the famine in land was severe. When they had used up the grain they had brought, brought back from Egypt, their father said to them, Go back and buy us a little food. But Judah said to him, the man specifically warned us, You will not see me again unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy food for you. But if you will not send him, we will not go. For the man said to us, You will not see me again unless your brother is with you. Why have you caused me so much trouble, Israel asked. Why did you tell the man that you had another brother? The answer, The man kept asking about us and our family. Is your father still alive? Do you have another brother? And he answered him accordingly. And you, how could we know that he would say, Bring your brother here? Then Judah said to his father, Israel, Send the boy with me. We will be on our way so that we may live and not die. Neither we nor you nor our dependents. I will be responsible for him. You can hold me personally accountable. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, I will be guilty before you forever. If we had not delayed, we could have come back twice by now. Then their father Israel said to them, If it, is, if it must be so, then do this. Put some of the best products of the land in your packs, and take them down to the man of his gift. A little balsam, a little honey, aromic gum, and resin. Piston, Picatokis and almonds. Take twice as much silver with you. Return the silver that was returned to you in the top of your bags. Perhaps it was a mistake. Take your brother also and go back at once to the man. May God Almighty cause the man to be merciful to you, so that he will release your other brother and Benjamin to you. As for me, I am de if I am depressed of my deprived of my sons, then I am deprived. The man took this gift doubled the amount of silver and Benjamin, they immediately went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw his Benjamin with them, he showed and said to his steward, Take the men to my house, slaughter an animal, and prepare it, for they will eat with me at noon. Men did as Joseph had said, and brought them to Jerusalem, or not Jerusalem, to Joseph's house. But the men were afraid because they were taken to Joseph's house, and they said, We have been brought here because of the silver that was returned in our bags the first time. They intended to overpower us, seize us, make us slaves, and take our donkeys. So they approached Joseph's door and spoke to him at the door of the house. They said, My lord, we really did come here the first time only to buy food. When we came to the place where we lodged the night and opened our grain, bags of grains, each one silver, was at the top of his back. It was the full amount of our silver, and we have brought it back with us. We have brought additional silver with us to buy food. We don't know who put silver in our bag. And their sewer said, May you be well. Don't be afraid. Your God and the God of your father must have put treasure in your bags. I received your silver. Then he brought Simeon out to them. Stuart brought the men into Joseph's house gave them water to wash their feet, and got feed for their donkey. 
Since the men had heard that they were going to eat a meal there, they prepared their gift for Joseph's arrival at noon. When Joseph came home, they brought him the gift they had carried into the house, and they bowed to the ground before him. He asked if they were well, and he said, How is your elderly, elderly father that you told me about? Is he still alive? They answered, Your servant our father is well. He is still alive, and they knelt low and paid homage to him. When he looked up and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, he asked, Is this your youngest brother that you told me about? Then he said, May God be gracious to you, my son. Joseph hurried out because he was overcome with emotion for his brother, and he was about to weep. He went into an inner room and wept there. Then he washed his face and came out. Regaining his composure, he said, Serve the meal. Then they served him by himself and his brother by themselves, and the Egyptians who were eating with him by themselves, because the Egyptians could not eat with the Hebrews, since that is detestable to them. They were seated before him in order of by age, from the firstborn to the youngest. The men looked at each other in astonishment. Portions were served to them from Joseph's table, and Benjamin's portion was five times larger than any other of theirs. They drank and became married, became drunk with Joseph. Well, that's a wonderful story that keeps on giving. Um, I don't have too much to share with you on those verses. Uh, I just think it's interesting, real quick, um, in chapter 42, verse 17 and verse 18, it says, Joseph imprisoned them together for three days. I think it's interesting that he put them in there for three days because... I don't necessarily don't know if it's a correlation or not, but it could be. Um, well, what I'm getting at is Jesus died on the cross, right? And then he was buried for three days, and then on the third day he rose again from the grave. I just think that it's interesting that this is the same amount of time. That he put the brothers in prison for three days and let them out on the third day. So I think it's very interesting. I don't know. Don't want to get too much into it about that. It's just an interesting thought. Uh, if you have a thought on that, just leave it below in the comments. And or, uh, yeah, leave it down in the comments. And if you like this video, click the like button and the subscribe, subscribe button. Um, we are, let's see. One, two, one, one, two, three, four. We're only about four more weeks uh, left, or four more days, sorry, four more days. So, um, before we complete the book of Genesis, so I think what we're going to do is switch it up. Uh, I got some other live ideas in the back burner ready to go uh so i hope you like them and it won't be biblical it'll be um some other subjects i think i'm gonna go with uh non-biblical subjects like alternative energy going over wind power solar power uh geothermal power possibly and some other things so hopefully you stay tuned and like those uh, videos as well. Uh, so have a good day. Enjoy your evening and hopefully uh, you have a good week. See you later. Bye.